Hi, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation. Hope you all had a wonderful New Year's. Uh, this is going to be our first live presentation um, since the new year began. Today is January the 6th, so we're only a few days into the new year. Hope your holidays were great. Hope you got everything you wanted and you had the chance to spend time with your family. Today, I'm uh, just kind of sitting around having a little coffee here. And I wanted to have a conversation with you today about some subjects that I think are really, really key and important. Now, you all, as you all know, I am very, very, uh, very, <laughs> how do I say this, passionate about how we teach and what we teach. And the reason I say that is because sometimes there's so much information out there that is not accurate, uh, doesn't make sense, but we believe it because the people who deliver the information deliver with great passion and they're totally, you know, they're, they're convinced that what they're, they're teaching you is true. And so uh, it, what occurs most of the time is that uh, we create what is called urban legends. And so this morning I want to talk to you about how do you create an urban legend? And uh, there's really some steps to it. So what you first do is you take random pieces of information about a subject. Doesn't matter what the subject is, could be peroxide, could be ammonia, could be bleach, doesn't matter what it is. And what you do is you string those random pieces of information together in a storyline that will support what you believe or what you teach. And you tell the world that they're based on science because in fact, the bits and pieces of that information are based on science. Uh, and then, voila, you have an urban legend. And as a result of that, we go out and we teach that as a belief system, and people start working with hair color in that way. They say, well, obviously, this is what the truth is. And in fact, they're not telling you the complete story. So I kind of want to share an experience that I went through in the last month um, on social media. And uh, here's the thing that, that I noticed when we talk about, and this subject is all about water. <laughs> it's funny because water plays an important role in what we do in hair coloring and in hair dressing. And yet a lot of things about water, there are bits and pieces of science about it, but sometimes people string them together and it really doesn't make sense. So let me give you an example. <clears throat> so for example, if we take, um, water, for example, and we say that we understand that oxidation, of course, is uh, part of the color process. We know that. And we know that color, water, I'm sorry, water contains oxygen. So there must be a connection. We know oxygen is a key element in the oxidation process for hair color. And so as we think about that, we go, well, there must be some sort of a connection. If oxidation is part of the hair color process, if water contains oxygen, and oxygen is a key element in the color process, what are we looking for? Well, water also contains chlorine, which is an oxidizer. Chlorine is used in most water treatment systems around the country, all right? And so chlorine is considered an oxidizing agent, okay? Chlorine, very much like a bleaching agent, it's going to oxidize, decompose. Ergo, water must be an oxidizer. That's the assumption we come to because water has chlorine and it has oxygen. It must be an oxidizer. Ergo, water will not slow down a bleaching process when we spray water on a bleach because water has oxygen and chlorine in it. Water must activate a bleaching compound rather than slow a bleaching compound down. Now, you, there's many people that are out there teaching this story. And so many of us believe that. I mean, you can see what's happened in the last month, the bad rap that water has gotten. And unfortunately, it's what is necessary in everything that we do. So let's explore just a little bit further. Let me share with you what happened on a social media platform that I was on. And um, here was the question. The question was given out. So do you think normal shampooing using a clarifying shampoo after a bleach service 
is enough to stop oxidation? Or would hairdressers benefit from a deoxidation product? So, so let me explain what a deoxidation is. It's opposite of oxidation. Most often deoxidating products, deoxidizing products are products that have a very, very low pH. And, and the, the goal is to slow down the oxida oxidation process by acidifying it and changing the pH, slowing down that oxidation process. So here was the answer that they got. Those of us that attended beauty school many years ago were taught two gentle shampoos were enough to eliminate all bleaching products from the hair. The secret was not in the shampoo, but rather the first rinsing the all, uh, all the bleach from the hair, and then being sure that all of the hair was included in the shampooing process. <clears throat> many stylists tended to leave their nape and the sides near the ears out of the shampooing and ended up with bad toning after the bleach. We never had antioxidation products, so I have never used one. So the person answering this question said they don't, you know, they never used an antioxidation process uh, product, so they're not familiar with them. And what they're really showing is it was came from bad shampooing. <laughs> That's where most of the problems happen because when many hairdressers shampoo the hair, they do a very quick shampoo. And you have to understand that bleach products are sometimes take a little bit of time getting them out of the hair. I'm sure you've all seen this happen in the salon, uh, even with hair color. Someone leads the client back in the shampoo bowl and shampoos their hair. And then when they set them up, there's still color residual around the neckline and the nape line. And so these are things that are really personal habit, it has nothing to do too much with the product. So this was the response from the person asking the question. But now we do know that it doesn't truly stop the oxidation process. The lightener may be removed, but oxidation can continue for up to 48 hours. That is not true. That has not been proven at all. Potentially harming the integrity of the hair after the client has left the salon. I finish all my oxidative work with, and they named a product here, Malibu Deox, which I have not used, but I am estimating that it's exactly what I said it was, to ensure the oxidative process is in fact stopped. So I made a post because sometimes I find we, we go down these rabbit holes and <clears throat> people that d are trying to learn they follow us down these rabbit holes because, and, and you see, they get all off the subject. And that's why I said, why do we go down the rabbit holes? Water is a universal solvent. That's what water is considered, a universal solvent. It takes on the pH of what you mix it with. So if I mix water with bleach, the water has a pH of the bleach. Okay, as simple as that. Okay. It does contain hydrogen and oxygen. We know that water molecules contain hydrogen and oxygen, but there's not enough oxygen in a water molecule to qualify it as an oxidizer. So I wanted to try to keep it very, very simple. But again, along came a specialist who said, um, responded to me, the chlorine in the water does qualify as an oxidizer. So this company, this educator is teaching that water is an oxidizer because it contains not only oxygen, but it contains chlorine. So let's take a look at what happens with chlorine. Here's what we know, okay? First of all, let's define what an oxidizing agent is. An oxidizing agent, also known as an oxidant, or oxidizer is a substance that has the ability to oxidize other substances. In other words, to accept their electrons. That's what an oxidizer, the oxidizer does. You've heard me teach, if you've been to my classes, that peroxide steals electrons. And as it steals electrons, it breaks down the structure of the hair. And it also changes what we visibly see. That's what the lightning process is. <clears throat> Common oxidizing agents are oxygen, hydrogen peroxide, and uh, halogens such as chlorine. Chlorine is considered a halogen uh, as part of that group. 
Chlorine has a pH of 13.0. Okay, so it is alkaline. It's considered a base or an alkaline product. The chlorine used in water systems, about one part chlorine to 100 parts of water. So, so when we talk about chlorine that's used in the water system, yes, it's used in the water system. Yes, it's an oxidizing agent, considered an oxidizing agent, but it's one part to 100 parts of water or the equivalent of one pint of chlorine to 12 and a half gallons of water. There's not enough chlorine in your water to consider it an oxidizer. When chlorine in any form is added to water, a weak acid called hypochlorous acid is the product is pr produced. Okay, so it's the acid that creates the oxidizing process. This is the acid, not the chlorine, which gives water its ability to oxidize and disinfect. So chlorine is not actually doing it. It's the combination of chlorine with the water. See, here's this parts of the story that they don't share with you. They take random pieces, put them together and tell you the story. And you kind of go, oh my God, well, water is terrible. Water does swell the hair. Yes, it does. Um, you don't add, you can't add moisture to the hair with water. Water will swell the hair. Uh, but, but we know that it's all part of the process, but it doesn't make water an oxidizing agent. And of course, there's one final piece of information about chlorine, which is important. If the pH of the water in, that you add chlorine to is, gets higher than a 7.8, so seven, remember, is what we call the balance point or neutral, the water is becoming too alkaline. When water is too alkaline, it reduces the effectiveness of the chlorine, the pool chemical that kills pathogens. So it reduces the effectiveness of the chlorine if the water if the pH gets higher than 7.8. It's important to note that at a pH of six, chlorine is functioning at 90% rate. At a pH of 8.5, just partly above a seven, chlorine is functioning at 9%. So what's that tell you? That tells me that when I spray water onto bleach, even water that contains chlorine, if the pH of the bleach on the hair is setting at 11 by spraying the water into the hair, guess what? The water takes on the pH of the bleach. So the, now the pH is too high to even consider chlorine as being part of the issue. The chlorine content in water has little or nothing to do with the process because adding it to bleaching compounds with a pH of 11.0 makes it mute. Non-relevant, silly, nonsense, but a great selling point. <laughs> well, great way to sell your deoxidizing pro product. There's not enough chlorine present to affect the process in any way. And if you still are concerned about water, use distilled water, because guess what? When you distill water, there's no chlorine present in that water. So if you're concerned about spraying the hair with water and causing it to oxidize, use distilled water. That's a fact. That's science. No chlorine is present. So why does bleach lighten hair with just water? Because we know that will happen, right? Here's why. Water is a solvent, remember that. In chemistry, water is considered a universal solvent. It is like tofu. It takes on the, the characteristics of whatever you mix it with. Don't believe me, test it yourself. Take your bleach, mix it with water, and guess what? The pH of your mixture will be the pH of your bleach. When mixed with the persulfate powder, this is how we lighten her with bleach and water. When water is mixed with the persulfate powders, they are water soluble. The, the powders are water soluble and the salts are activated and they do the majority of the lightening action. That's why you've heard us say in many classes, you can lighten hair without using peroxide. 
All that peroxide does is it accelerates your lightning action. So you could take simply water and bleach, take a level three strand of hair, apply it to the hair, leave it on for 30 minutes. You will not lift it four levels, but you will create lightness in the hair. How'd you do that without peroxide? The water is a solvent. The powders are water soluble. When the powders break down and become a solution, they become activated and those are what lightens the hair. So I just needed to share this with you today because sometimes these things get stuck in my head and I just go, oh my God, you look, you believe what you want to believe, but please understand there's a lot of these urban legend stories out there. And when we, when we don't pay attention to what they're saying, or we believe what they're saying, and we believe that it's absolutely correct, then sometimes that leads us down a pathway that we really don't want to pursue. So hopefully you've gained some information from my short little video today. Remember our mantra at Guru Nation, L-W-Y-D-K, that's our hashtag, learn what you don't know. Uh, we invite you to come and visit us on our website and you can get to our website very easy now. People have contacted me and they said, you know, it's really hard to find, get your website. The educational catalog keeps spinning. I know there's some sort of a glitch that we're trying to work through. Most often it comes from the user side because you have to clear your cookies or empty your cash. Most of you probably don't know what that means. So I made it easy for you here in my bio on Instagram. You will see a link. It says link tree forward slash real, real captain color. Just simply click that. That'll take you directly to my, my link tree page. And you can, any one of the classes that are listed there, you can tap on the class. It will take you directly to the catalog. Scroll down till you find the class, make your selection, and come spend some time with us. Hopefully, uh, we are doing things that help you grow as a salon professional and help you understand a little bit more about hair color and hopefully help you just discover your own personal genius. So, until I see you again, from my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out. You guys have an amazing week. See you soon. Bye bye. Thank you.